Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we find ourselves back in the year 110 AD, where the Roman Empire is at its height of glory, ruled by Emperor Trajan. All borders are secured, and people can focus again on the Empire's internal matters. Trajan is for 2-4 to four players, that plays in 1-2 to two hours, for ages 12 and up, and published by Renegade Game Studios. Trajan is a development game in which players try to increase their influence and power in various areas of Roman life, such as political influence, trading, military dominion, and other important parts of Roman culture. And you'll be doing this using a system similar to that in the ancient game Mancala. Today we'll be doing a rule school where I'll teach you how to set up and play the game so that you don't have to read the rulebook yourself. Now I place timestamps below me in the description of this video just in case you want to jump to a specific section of the rules. Without further ado, let's get started. Trajan is a strategy game for two to four players where you're going to be taking actions in a Mancala type way in order to suffice demands of different Trajan tiles which will give you points and all sorts of different cool bonuses throughout the game. But it also allows you to activate specific actions for that turn and there's many different ones you can take. Sometimes you'll be moving workers to a worker camp or to construction zones to get different tiles to get points and try for set collection. Other times you'll be drawing different commodity cards and using them for set collection types to get different amount of points. Sometimes you'll be moving your military leaders around to get different tiles that help you out, and sometimes you'll be bringing your legions in to get points with that military leader. You'll also be moving up a senate track, gaining points, and hopefully having majority so that you can get bonus tiles that will give you more points at the end of the game. And you'll be trying to meet periodic demands by spending the right tiles, but if you don't have enough, you'll end up losing some points. So it's a deep strategy game with lots of replayability and variability in the setup. To set up, you're first going to place the board in the middle of the table where everyone can reach it. Next, each player is going to select which color they're playing. And they're going to take a player board that has that color around the ring here, and it has that same color in the middle here. So this player is playing red. They're also going to take all the player tokens of that. Here we have a one large military leader token, and here we have the smaller of them. There's 15 of those legionnaires. Each player is also going to get two discs of their color. Each player is going to get an arc of Trajan that they'll just put off to the side for now, and you'll get 12 action markers. Now, there are two of each color, and there's six different colors, so it should look just like this. Just put it off to the side for now. Now on the upper right hand side of the board there's a green oval. This is the military camp. Each player is going to place their single military leader token on it and one of their smaller legionnaires as shown on the board. So for example in a two player game it might look like this. Next, each player is going to take those 12 action markers of those six different colors. You're going to shuffle them up in your hands and you're going to place it so that there's two of them in each of these spots. So it might look something like this. Then you're going to take the Arc of Trajan and you're going to put it in the number one slot just like that. Next, each player is going to take their two discs of their color and each player is going to stack their disc on the bottom left hand side of the score track where this arrow is. It doesn't matter which order they are stacked. Then you'll assign a start player either randomly or by any way you like and that start player is going to take their other disc and they're going to place it in this senate spot. Then going clockwise, each player is going to place their disc on top around the table. In this case, we have the two players. And this is important because, uh, as we'll show later, the one on top is leading if there's ever a tie. Next, on the left side of the board, you'll see this blue outline for different ships, and there are three ships. You want to make sure each ship is not on this gray side. You want it on the blue side. And you'll place each of these three here. It doesn't matter which one is where. So it will look something like this. Next, you're going to find the Trajan tiles, which will look like this. Now, there's six different categories of them. Five of the categories, you'll put them in stacks of like kind. For example, they all have the same icon on them, like that. You'll put them in a pile. You'll shuffle them up and put them in a single pile. For the last category, the sixth one, they actually have different logos on them. There'll be a helmet, a torch, and a bread. But the easiest way to find all these is they're the only nine tiles that are worth one point. So all the one point ones you put together in a stack, shuffle them, and place it for that sixth category. And you're actually going to place them on these six spots here on the board. It doesn't matter which ones go where. 
And so it might look something like this. Next, you're going to be placing some tiles. Most of these will be going to be face down on the side of the board on the right. You'll have these construction tiles, which the shapes match this spot on the board. You're going to have these extra action yellow tiles, which will be matching here. And you have these green forum tiles, which will be matching for here. First, you'll shuffle these up and put all 20 of them out in this spot of the board. So when done, it might look something like that. Then you're going to take three of these randomly and place it in these three yellow spots face up. And so it might look something like this. Then you're going to randomly take these green forum tiles and you're going to fill up a certain amount of columns depending on the amount of players. With two players, you'll fill up these two columns. With three players, all the way up to here. And with four players, you'll fill all these up. Right now we're fill, uh, filming with two players, so let's set that up. And notice that just because these had green backs, these forum tiles, it doesn't mean the front side of them are going to be green. There's different colors. Now you're also going to take some of these green forum tiles and you're going to randomly place one in this green box in each of the provinces in the board. So it might look something like this. Each player is then going to take one of their small worker pawns and place it in this worker camp here. It's this oval right in the middle of the board. Next, you'll also place a pile of all these plus two tokens near the board. Then you're going to take this thick white time marker and you're going to place it on the section on the bottom of the board depending on the amount of players. Four players, three players, or two players. Depending on your player count, you'll put it in that ring. And regardless of the player count, you'll always place it where this arrow is. So we're playing with two players, we'll put it here. If you were playing with three players, you'd place it here. If you're playing with four players, you'd place it there. You're then going to find these four quarter year tiles. It's one, two, three, and four. And you'll place this at the one is on top, followed by the two, followed by the three, and followed by the four. And it's good to keep this somewhat close to where the time tracker is. Next, you'll find these green circular demand tiles. You'll place them face down like this. You'll shuffle them up. You'll remove three of them from the game, put them back in the box, and you'll want to keep them somewhat near these quarter year markers. You're then going to find all of the bonus tiles. They look like this on one side and they're gray on the other side. Take all of these and throw them all in the linen bag. Then each player is going to draw one of those bonus tiles from the linen bag and place it near their player board. Make sure it is yellow side up like that. Then once every player has one, anybody will draw two of them from the bag and you'll place them on these bonus spots on the bottom right hand side of the board, making sure that the yellow side is face up. Then you can place this bag off to the side, but make sure that everyone will be able to reach it later. Next, find and shuffle up the commodity cards. They look like this. Then you're going to draw two cards and place them face up, one to the left of the pile, one to the right. Then, beginning with the start player and going clockwise around the table, each player will be able to take three of these cards. Now, they can take one off the top, and they can take one from here. If they do, they need to refill it before they make their next choice. And let's say they like this one, and then they refill it just like that. That's three cards. Then it would be the next player's clockwise turn. Every player will do this. Keep in mind when deciding which cards to take, you're going to be turning in uh, unique cards, meaning they're different, or light cards for different points. Then, starting with the star player, and then going clockwise, each player is going to take three of these Trajan tiles. Now, only in this setup, you cannot take more than one of any of these six columns, meaning you can only take at most one from any of these columns, but this is only during the setup. So each player is going to take those three tiles, and they're going to place them in the two, the four, and the six slots, and they can pick which one goes in which slot. The object of the game is to get the most points, and there's many ways to score points, but the main ways are by taking specific actions to activate certain Trajan tiles, by moving your military leaders and legionnaires around the different provinces to gather points, to gather different construction tiles to get points, and to set collect for many of the same types, to turn in different commodity cards, either equals or not equals, to get specific amount of points, by fulfilling different bonus tiles, and by advancing up the Senate track. The game is played over four quarters of a year, and each quarter of a year actually has four rounds, which is going to be tracked by this. So players are going to be taking actions, and this is going to be moving the time tracker around, and it's going to be going through different rounds, and once these four rounds are done, that's one quarter of a year, so there's going to be a total of four of these entire things you'll go through. On a player's turn, you're going to go through three steps. The first one is to move action markers, and that is mandatory. What you'll do is you'll pick up all of the action markers in any one of these specific spots, 
and you'll announce how many markers you're picking up. And since you have to take all the markers, there has to be at least one marker in that tray in order to pick it up. So let's say we pick up these two. You'll announce I'm taking two markers, which means the player to your right will move the time marker at the bottom of the board. They always move it clockwise, but they'll move it in amount of spaces equal to the amount of action markers that player is moving this turn. So in this case, that player had two of them, so this would move two times clockwise. Then you're going to place those markers clockwise, always clockwise from where you took them, but you get to say which one goes where. So I could put this one here and this one here, or I could have done it the other way. So let's say we do this and this. Now, optionally, if when you take those markers, you wanna place them like this to help remember how many markers you've actually taken for the person to move the time track, that's fine as well. But we're gonna do this. The last spot that you place a marker is known as the target tray. Now, at this point, if you fulfill the demands of a Trajan tile that's attached to that tray, you can essentially complete that tile. Now, all of those will give you a certain amount of victory points, in this case, nine. Uh, other tiles you'll see will give you different victory points, and then a special action will happen. We'll go over all those later, but it's important to know that, that you've fulfilled the demand, so this is two blue, so we can do that, and in this case, it's just points. And when you gain points, you simply move around the track and more than one player can occupy the same spot. Now, just to show you, what if it had started like this? Here, I could have taken these two. I could put one here and put one here. Now, this is the active tray. The two blue ones were already there, but that's okay because this is the last tray you're dropping. And so this is the active tray and this would still trigger. Now, once you gain the points from it and you've taken the special action, most of these tiles will get removed out of the game. However, if you activated any of the Trajan tiles that have one of these three icons, these are all the ones with the one points on them, you'll place them on that corresponding spot like that. It will not be removed from the game. Then after possibly completing a Trajan tile, you can optionally take the action associated with that target tray. And since that action had this icon on it, the forum action, you'll take this action on the board. And this allows you to take any one of the forum tiles that are still there and add it to the respective spot on your player board. So for example, let's say we took the helmet. You'd place it right on the spot on your board like this. The green forum helmet goes just like that. Now keep in mind, we took that action because the target tray had that action associated with it. Then it would go to the next player's turn clockwise. Keep in mind, when it comes back to us, we cannot take anything from here because there's no action markers in that tray. But if we took from either of these two trays, we'd pick up all three and drop one in each spot clockwise, activating the last tray just as shown. So now I'm actually gonna go over what all these other different actions are, assuming that you had just activated that tray. Let's talk about this Trajan action. The Trajan action allows you to take that on the board here, and it's taking any one of these Trajan tiles. Let's say we take this one. You'll then place it in the spot that has your arch of Trajan in it, and you'll move this to the next spot clockwise that's open. So you go just like this. Now, if when placing this, just like we just showed, if all the other spots were full, you would place this in the middle. And if one ended up opening up, you would place it there just like that. And if all of these are full, you cannot take that Trajan action. Now, keep in mind, I placed this one here. It has two greens. This is a great setup for moving this on my next turn by going like this and this and activating that tile. Those are the types of combos you're going to be looking for. The next one is the Senate action that has the scroll on it. And you simply move your disc one spot to the right and gain the points you see here. In this case, it would be two points. Let's say it had looked like this, and I was here and I took that action. I would go on top of this next disc, and I would get three points. And if you happen to be all the way on the eighth spot, you cannot take that Senate action. Next, we're going to talk about the construction action. You have two options with this action. The first one is to take any one of your workers and place it into this worker camp. Why would you want more than one of them here? Well, let's talk about the second option. Instead of adding a recruiting a worker here, as I just showed, you can assign one of your workers from this worker camp to this area. Now, if it's your first worker out there, you can place it on any of these. And when you do so, you'll take that tile. Let's just say we put it in this spot right here. We would put this here. Now we would take this tile and we would place it on the corresponding spot and you'd immediately get these victory points. Now, if it's your first tile here, you also get a bonus action. Whichever action you're covering up, you get to immediately take that action. They're all the same actions that we've been going over. If you get more than one of the same type, you simply stack it. You're actually trying to get 
uh, three or four of the same types because that will be big points in the end of the game that we'll go over later. Now, if you already have a worker out there and you've taken that action and you're going to assign this worker, you have to go adjacent, not, not diagonal, but up, down, left, right, adjacent to one of your other workers. So you might go something like this, like this. And if you had another one out there on a, on a subsequent action uh, of that type to construct, you could go adjacent to any of your workers that are there. And again, keep in mind, you'll be stacking the light kinds, getting those points immediately, but if there's already one here, you don't get that bonus action. Now keep in mind, if I did have another one of these workers here and I was placing it on a subsequent action, I now could go adjacent to any one of my workers that are there. Now, other players can place their worker where uh, other opponents are and vice versa. For example, if this player was assigning a worker, again, like normal, if it's their first worker, they could go on any of these, but they could go in a spot where somebody else is and they would do this mostly to try to get to a specific tile that maybe they want. But keep in mind, if they do go to one of those spots, they don't get any benefit. Next, we're going to talk about the military action. When you take this, you have three choices. The first possible choice is to take any one of your Legionnaires from your supply, and you can place this in the military camp. Another possible option when taking the military action is to move your military leader, which is your larger pawn, to an adjacent province. Well, everyone starts here in the military camp, and the three adjacent provinces are the one just directly above it. This one that has the dotted line over here, and this one that has the dotted line over here. So let's say we move here. Now, if it has a tile there, you'll take it and add it to your board. And of course, there's different tiles that go in all different spots, but you'll find the right spot and put it right there. The last possible option when taking this, and again, you're only selecting one of these three, is to move your Legionnaire. Now, you can move one of your Legionnaires from the military camp, to the province where your military leader is, regardless of how far it is. So we could just put it like this, and then you immediately gain the points there, in this case, five points. Now you can't move one of your legionnaires where you already have one of them. And let's just say beforehand, it was like this. When you move a legionnaire to a spot where your military leader is, you'll get those points, but you get minus three points for each opponent that has a legionnaire there. So that would be minus three for a total of two points. And you can never get less than zero points if there's more opponents there. And the final action we'll talk about is the seaport action. You actually have four options for this action. Now the first possible seaport action is draw two and then discard one. In this case, you'll draw two from the top of the deck and you'll decide from your current hand, meaning all the cards you have, not necessarily just the ones you took, and you'll discard one in either of the two discard piles. A second option, again, you're only doing one of these, is to draw one from either the discard and you'll draw the top card. If it happens to be the last card there, then you'll flip over a card from the deck to make that a face-up discard pile. The third possible choice here is to play commodities and refill your hand. You can play one or two commodities in front of you into your tableau and then refilling from the deck however many cards you played, one or two. In this case, we played two, so we'll draw two. Notice you cannot draw from the discard pile with this option. So not only does this help you get new cards into your hand, it also helps you build up for possible end game bonuses, which we'll go over in the final scoring section of this video. Now the last of the four seaport actions you can take is called ship commodities. Now let's say in a previous turn, we had played these commodities down in our tableau. These have nothing to do with the commodities that you're going to ship. Let's say we actually had four cards. You can ship as many cards as you want. And let's say we had these four and we wanted to ship these four. So you would lay these in your tableau. And depending on the sets that these cards are, you can do different things with them. Again, you don't use the cards that are only in your tableau for this. When you ship commodities, it's only the cards that you're playing that turn. In this case, we have four different or unique types of commodities. Then you'll decide which of these ships you're using. Like this one says a certain amount of equal cards. This one says a certain amount of unique cards. This one is three different pairs of cards with each of these pairs individually being the same cards. Now here we sent four of the commodities that were different, so we'll actually get eight points. If you had just one card, it would be two, two cards would be four, three cards would be six, and four cards would be eight, and these work the same way. So I'd immediately get those eight points, and we would move up the score tracker as normal. And then you'll flip this over to the gray side, which means it's less points for anybody else. 
If it's already on its gray side when you do this, you simply get the points as indicated and you just leave it just like that. Now turns will continue in clockwise motion like this until this time tracker either gets right on this arrow or passes it. That will be the end of the round at the end of that player's turn. Now at the end of the first round of one of these quarter years, you're going to flip one of these demand tiles. This is sort of a round or a quarter year counter, if you will, because now we know that we've been through one round. Once this goes all the way again, the second time, a second demand tile will come out. This tells us that we've been through two rounds and we'll come through here again, it'll be three. And when we come back the last time, if this would have been the fourth round, if there are three demand tiles out, then we know that this is the end of this first quarter year. So at the end of this quarter year, every player is gonna have to pay these demands or they're gonna have to lose points. So let's see how that happens. Now let's say this is how our board looked like and these were the demands for this quarter year. They want uh, two torches, which is religion, and one helmet, which is games. So what you have to do is spend a forum tile of that matching type to pay that demand. So this is one helmet, so we would pay this and discard it out of the game, and this allows us to, you know, make that demand. Now Trajan tiles, these are the ones that if you remember, once you actually complete, they don't go out of the game, they actually go in these spots. These give you one demand met for that type for the rest of the game. So here, and they don't get removed. So here we have this, and this suffices one of these demands. Now I would have needed a forum tile of this type to suffice the second demand. So this means because this tile met this one, our Trajan tile meets this one, we don't have this, so we're missing one of these. On the bottom far right of the board, next to the time track, you'll see these three. If you're missing one demand, you lose four points, two demands, nine points, all three, 15 points. You update the scoreboard for everybody right now. Also, you must meet as many demands as possible. Meaning, if you had this, you couldn't choose not to spend it to meet this demand, you'd have to spend it. However, if your board looked like this, you could meet this demand with the Trajan tile and you would not need to spend this forum tile. Next, you would elect the Consul and Vice Consul in the Senate. You'll see who has the most votes. Both of these players have five votes. But some players may have these Senate forum tiles that add to those votes. So this player would have had the five from the board and four more here, they would have had nine. Now, whoever has the most votes gets their first choice at one of these bonus tiles. And they'll take either one of these and they'll add it yellow side up next to their board. Whoever's in second place will take the remaining bonus tile, but they'll take it gray side up and place it in front of their board. If there's ever a tie for Senate votes, it's whoever's actually further on this track. And if they're still tied like this, it's whoever's on top. And if everyone has zero votes, whoever's on top gets the first choice and the next one down would get the next one. And that second player puts it on the gray side like normal. Either way, once this happens, you'll take all these players and you'll put them back in the start space with the one with the lowest votes on the bottom and the next highest votes on top and such and so forth. Let's say it was like this and this player would go on the bottom and then this player would go right on top. And then players would remove tiles. You'd remove any votes that are here and you'd remove them from the game and make sure any demands that were met from those forum tiles are gone as well. Then you'll remove any face up forum tiles like this and extra action tiles. These ones, you remove any tiles here out of the game. Then you would remove the three demand tiles that were for this round out of the game. Then you're going to refill and flip tiles. Any of the ships that were on gray sides, you'll flip to their blue sides. You'll then refill these bonus spots by drawing two bonus tiles from the bag and placing them yellow side up. Then you'd fill any open forum tiles in any of the provinces that have no legions or no military leaders. So this one would get one, just like this, but this one would not because it has a military leader, and this one would not because it has both of them. You would then refill to the player count, just like you did in setup, with forum tiles and the three extra action tiles. Then we will remove the top quarter year tile to show what quarter year it's in. And remember, there's actually four of these that you'll go through in the whole game. And so if we were actually in the fourth at this point and this was gone, we would go to the end game and final scoring. First, you're going to get one point for every commodity card that's still in your hand. In this case, two cards, so two points. You'll get one point for each worker in the worker camp. You'll get one point for each legion in the military camp. 
You'll then get one point for each of your Trajan tiles that's in your action circle. Then you'll get points for set collecting the different construction tiles. If you have three of the same, you'll get 10 points. If you have four of the same, you'll get 20 points. You'll also get points from any bonus tiles you have, keeping in mind that the gray side is worth less than the yellow side, and these do different things. For example, you'll get 9 points if you have at least one form tile with this on it. If you want to see what all these bonus tiles do, you can look at page 10 in the rulebook. And at this point, whoever has the most points is the winner. If it's tied, whoever's furthest on the Senate track wins. Remember, if they're still tied there, whoever's ever higher wins. Now this place here is for the extra action tiles. When you get those, you'll place it on the corresponding spot. This allows you to take an extra action of that type, but only when you actually take that action. For example, let's say this was the tray that we basically did our target tray in, meaning we ended our moving our action markers here and we took this military action. If we have another one of these here, we can spend it to take an extra action, but again, only the same type of the one that you normally took. Now, there are ways to get these, which we'll just show you in a minute. And when you get these, they stay there, they never get spent. But now when we spend one of these tiles, we'll get to take this action two more times. That's a total of three times. Once for the original action, once for this, and a second one for that. Now, you can actually have more than one of the same, but you can only use one tile of each on a specific turn. Now let's talk about some of these other forum tiles. Here is a, a wild extra action tile. Now this could be a substitute for any of these extra, extra action tiles, and once it's used, it's removed from the game. This one is a wild commodity card. It could basically be used for any card, and this could be used during the game to try to take the seaport action and get points, as shown previously, or it can be used at the end of the game to try to fill the demands of certain bonus tiles, like this one that has commodities. And once this is used, it's removed from the game. Now this is a wild demand tile. This would allow you to act as one of these forum tiles when you're fulfilling the demands at the end of a specific quarter year, or it can be used and spent for using it at the end of the game for certain bonus tiles, like this one, it could be used for this. Either way, when it's used, it's removed from the game. And this one is a wild construction tile, so this could be the fourth one of this set, which would make this, instead of 10 points, 20. Now we've talked about some of these Trajan tiles, but let's talk about the rest of them. This one allows you to take the amount of shown workers and place it from your mat into the military camp. This one allows you to take the shown amount of workers and place them in the worker camp. This one allows you to draw two cards from the commodity deck. Again, not the discard piles, but from the deck. This one allows you to take one of those plus twos that we just talked about and place it on any open spot on one of the six extra action tiles on your player board. And this deck was the one that had the different demands that help you uh, not lose points for those specific demands at the end of the quarter years that we showed you previously. Well, I hope this helped you dive right into Trajan and get to the fun quicker than you normally would if you had to read the rulebook yourself. Now, if you have further questions about the rules, I've placed a link below me in the description of this video, and that's the best place to ask them, because not only will I be notified, but so will Renegade Game Studios. Yeah. <laughs>